if someone is sharing with you their experiences and you just can't see it, you don't get it, shush. Maybe you're not their person they should be having that conversation with. But we can all have compassion and empathy. And maybe you can say that sounds heavy. Have you thought of talking to someone who can help you with that? Hi, thank you for joining me for this episode of Intuition, Your Success Compass. I'm Vicki. Thank you for coming back or thank you for being here for the first time. I love meeting new people. I really enjoy people. So those of you who are subscribing, listening, following, all of that, I am so grateful. I'm so grateful because the ability to come together and to understand who we are and how we are and to grow as individuals is always going to contribute to the collective. And I'm so grateful to everybody who stops by a few seconds or if you hang out for the whole time. So this episode not the most fun topic, but it's one that's important. And it's about trauma. Let me preface this by saying I am not a therapist. I am an intuitive life coach who has been working with people and their trauma for over two decades, but I am not a therapist. And I want to be very clear about that. And I also want to say that if you are in a vulnerable place right now, or if this isn't something you even want to hear about and the ways that I've learned how to heal my own trauma, how to understand it, how to dance with it at times. I, I understand that. Pass on by. Like, literally skip this. Your health, your mental health, your emotional health, your spiritual health, you are in charge of that. You are responsible. So if this is not a topic that you want to discuss, be part of connect with or anything like that, pfft, scroll on by. So because we are an experience of everything that we go through energetically and we carry that with us. And it can also mean if you're ingesting material and it's not of a resonance for you or it just feels off, sometimes that means stick around. You're going to learn something. And sometimes that means trust your freaking self and move on by. So when I talk about trauma, I want to talk about the ways in which it affects us intuitively. And I also am going to talk about the ways that it gets in the way of our happiness. And there are different experiences that I've had, depending on what age I was and the information I had and how much work I had done with my own therapist. I highly recommend therapy. I'm probably going to say it a few times during this episode. I understand that finding one that connects with you, understands you, you vibe with, can be tricky. But it's important to keep trying and to connect and to believe in yourself in that way. I am very fortunate to have had a brilliant ther therapist at the time that I needed it. And then other times have worked with other coaches that would say the same thing. They weren't the ther therapist, but the work I got out of it was very therapeutic for me. And that also was because I wanted to understand. I think it's very important for us to not demonize our trauma, to recognize it, to understand it, but also to see it as a way of understanding who we are and to empower our own belief in ourselves and Jiminy Crickets, that takes courage. It takes a lot of bravery, energy sometimes, and it takes a certain level of connection with your soul to understand that, yes, you experienced it in this lifetime. I don't know anyone who can get through a lifetime without some form of trauma. Maybe it's not a capital T trauma. Maybe it's a lowercase trauma. Maybe it's something that you didn't even identify as trauma and then later on in your life realized, well, holy macaroni, that was not okay. Full confession, that is how I wandered through my life. And I understand that it was a survival technique until such time that I was like, oh, that wasn't cool. That was trauma. Oh, that's trauma. Okay, good to know. But there are also times where I feel like people apply the trauma word 
and it might be a little bit bigger than it needs to be. Sometimes in our desire to belong, I see this in humanity, the acquiring of someone else's trauma or the tendency to, on some level, want to belong so much that we identify and become embodiment of the trauma idea, the process of just, I don't know, I don't want to make it, I don't want to be insensitive to trauma, but I also think it's important to point out that sometimes when people are talking about their trauma, you can't minimize it. It's their own trauma, but be aware of it within yourself if you are traumatizing something that's not actually trauma. Maybe it's an inconvenience. Maybe it's a hurt, but it's not at the level of trauma in a way that the attachment to it makes it seem. Does that make sense? I have had to say to myself, both sides of it, I've had to say, Vicky, that was horrific. Like that, if you heard that in another person, you would absolutely have compassion, empathy, and be like, oh, that was actually traumatizing what you experienced. And there have been other times where I'm like, Vicky, that was not trauma. That was you making something bigger than it needs to be because you're maybe avoiding this thing over here that actually was. So our brain is fascinating. It will do that on its own without your permission. It will wander into caves and categories and descriptions and things that aren't necessarily true. And this is where identifying what is your level of understanding around the word trauma, around the experience of trauma, and uh, around the definition for yourself. Okay, so we've met people who can make a big deal out of everything and make it seem like they've gone through trauma when in fact it was an inconvenience or frustration. I see that being mixed a lot where somebody was frustrated, where they were hurt, or where what they were going through at the time was absolutely opening up and triggering something that they've gone through in the past. So therefore, they might be going through or you might be going through a little tea or a frustration or a insecurity or a grief, a depression, a despair. And it's opening up something from the past because it stays in our neural pathway until you look at it and you release it. And that's my point with this episode is not to necessarily clear up trauma. That's not my job, unless, of course, you've hired me to help you with that. But it's to give a little bit of background of what could be causing your frustration or um, sadness or out of alignment and have you gently pointing your own awareness to your own path because you lived it. And yes, we all have that amazing capacity to close off those rooms that we don't want to look at. I did with my therapist. I was fortunate enough that she was EMDM, EMDR certified, eye movement desensitization reprocessing. And we did a lot of work with that because of my tendency to downplay whatever I had gone through and to not, it's not that I didn't want to look at it. I did not want to admit that the people that I grew up with didn't care about me enough to address what was going on. I didn't want to admit that. I wanted to still believe that they were doing the best they could with what they had. And then I grew to really despise that statement because I don't think they did. It's perfectly okay when you recognize your own experience and your the impact it's had on you to admit to yourself, and it's painful, and freaking annoying sometimes, to admit that the people in your life did not do the best they could with what they had. They chose to ignore, avoid. And yes, I understand those as their own personal saboteurs and their own insecurities, and they didn't have the connections and the information that we have now. But I don't know about you, 
I am done giving excuses to those who just chose not to show up in my life. And in my case, there's not a lot I can do about some of them because they've croaked, but I can work on that within myself and give permission to be frustrated about the experiences that I went through that people didn't show up for. So understanding your own trauma is your responsibility. It is not your partner's responsibility. It is not your kid's responsibility. Don't put that on them. It's not your friends. Your, it's not even your therapist's responsibility. They're there in order to guide you and help you understand it, but it's your responsibility. And if you truly want to have a happier now or a happier future, you got to get in there and you got to tussle with it a little bit. And I'm not saying get into it and be deep in it forever in a day. That's not going to help you either. What I am saying is understand what your trauma may be, what it looks like, and its long-term effect on your mental well-being and therefore your relationship with yourself, first and foremost, and then your relationship with other people. There are different types of experiences of trauma, and some of them overlap so much. When I was writing my list, I'm like, well, they all meet up <laughs> like this massively overlapping Venn diagram because like physical trauma, injury to your body from an accident, external force, violence, it, it definitely creates its own uh, avenue, its own way of impacting your emotional well-being your resiliency, your spirit. It, it impacts your spirit. When I'm meeting with someone, one of the things that happens is I see a timeline. Remember those timelines that we had to study in like history, if any of you are of my generation? There were the timelines where they put the wars or uh, major events, signing of Declaration of Independence, like that kind of thing, right? It would show up on a timeline. When I'm looking at someone intuitively, and in a session, I will often see blips on their timeline and it's in a generalized area. So sometimes I'll say to someone, okay, there is a blip between the age of nine and 11. Sometimes it's spot on, but sometimes that can be tricky to, to nail down. And this is what happens. And it feels like you went through this situation where there was an impact to your physical being because I can feel them almost being knocked out of their body. For those of us that grew up with physical punishment, even when punishment wasn't needed as a child, we often have to leave our bodies. Like we have to get out of our body to go through that, to survive it, especially those where it was a recurring event. Like I used to hate Sundays because Sundays were the day I got my clock cleaned the most. Like I would do anything I could to avoid being home for Sundays, except for most of my childhood, it was mandatory that you be there for the one o'clock dinner. So, and then the cleanup. And it was usually after cleanup that the ringing of the bell started. So that, I would start preparing that morning. I can look back on this. I didn't, it wasn't intentional at the time, but I would start preparing that morning to like hightail it out of my body. Because again, I didn't want to believe that the man who created me physically in this lifetime would be willing to do this. And the woman who danced with him to create me physically in this lifetime would be willing to just sit back and watch it and not do anything about it. Like that was the apathy was more painful to me than the physical thing. But I had to leave my body in order to make it to Monday. So I wouldn't, and I feel like that was more my spirit that was being broken rather than my physical self. Because yes, that hurt. But it was always more the damage to my heart emotionally that I feel like was the most difficult. And that can, and obviously does stay with you until you look at it. I can speak of it now in a very generalized term with no emotion attached, but why? Because I did the freaking crying. <laughs> I did the yelling. I did the frustration. I did the, you suck. 
And that was not good for any of us. And how dare you do that to my siblings? And how dare you do that to myself? And yes, I know you went through it, but that's no reason. So that has happened off screen. And it's not something that triggers in me anymore. Even if I witness it, quite frankly, I read some books that are pretty, could be traumatizing in themselves to do that, but to read and to ingest, but they're just stories to me at this point. And that's what I would love for everybody because denying your experiences are not going to do you any good either. It's opening those doors. I always feel like once we look at it, it dissipates. And then I might not see this blip on somebody's screen. So when I see that, oftentimes what I'll say is, you have an injury in your spirit timeline. And would you like to look at that? And I have to say, I, I'm not going to put a percentage on it, but the leading percentage of people will be like, they know immediately what I'm talking about. And it took me a good decade and a half to not get in there with that pain with them, like to know I'm supposed to be over here holding a support place. I still tear up, <laughs> but that's empathy. And I feel like that helps. Like most of our trauma gets healed by being witnessed by someone saying, yeah, that sucked. And I'm sorry you went through that genuinely, not the fake shit. So there can be emotional and psychological trauma. And I would say there's emotional trauma to anything that we go through that kind of takes a little divot out of us. And it can be overwhelming events that we went through. It can be neglect in a relationship, in your home. Witnessing violence, witnessing that act can have that psychological trauma. And it's something that can definitely get in the way of forming healthy relationships or impacting one's ability to experience joy. And that's why I say you're responsible for healing your trauma. You are not responsible for anything that happened to you. You're not. You're not. You are responsible for looking at it, taking it out, understanding it, putting yourself back together, and then moving forward in a more empowered place. To not keep the story going, but to understand that, yes, this happened to me and I no longer want to carry it. There are so many different levels that I could never go into it because there are so many people, but I just wanted to speak of this in a way to say, I understand it, I empathize, and I also feel like it's really important to hear that you can move your own trauma, you can move your own limiting belief systems, and you can be in joy no matter what you went through. Okay, and I have seen such beautiful examples of this in my practice, but also in my friendships and in reading books about people who have gone through stuff like the genocide in Rwanda and the trauma that has happened in the Holocaust and the, the people that came through that and then used it as their evidence of life, their evidence of joy. And we can have collective trauma, absolutely. This is where I see some of that stuff of which I, it frustrates me because you can be empathetic and you can be wildly intuitive, so open. It's not okay for you to glom onto somebody else's experience and to make it about you. So for instance, all that's going on in Palestine and Israel and Gaza and Venezuela and Kenya and still Rwanda and all of the things that are going on, is there a collective trauma that can happen? Of course. If you're not in those everyday situations, then you need to look at your own enmeshment 
with others or towards other stories about whether you are taking on in the name of empathy. And I know I'm going to get some backlash for this subject, but you know what? I have seen people use it to manipulate others, and it's not okay. If, you've, if you're in those physical experiences or you went through something similar and that news, oops, sorry, is triggering something within you, fine, but get the help so that you can move through it. If you are saying that what is going on to others is impacting you so much you can't be in your own life, again, you need to handle that. But you also need to recognize that is very disrespectful to the actual people who are going through it. And maybe you can help. Maybe you can donate. Maybe you feel helpless. I know I have, like in watching some of the videos and trying to stay informed about what's going on and seeing the numbers that are piling up and feeling frustrated that people aren't doing anything. I'm like, oh, I'm holding that frustration within myself. What can I do? I can donate. I can become more informed. I can speak when other people are talking about it and dismissing it to say, do not underestimate that this could happen in our own country because we're headed there if we don't all show up and vote and be aware. So yes, there's a collective or community trauma that can happen and happens in natural disasters as well, societal upheaval, school boards going amok. Absolutely. And it can lead to feelings of insecurity, fear, a diminished sense of community. Remember, it, well, I don't know if you listened to the episode about the energy of 2024, but I had talked about how it's all about community. And this is part of it, being aware of what's going on, but not making it about you unless you are physically, literally involved. See how you can help be a contributing member of society. Because it will empower you and it will help you to heal some of your own insecurities. And it will impact your overall happiness and well-being if you're taking on stuff and making it yours. It's a typical avoidance thing and not looking at your own, okay? So just feel that out throughout the day. If something comes up and it's bringing up a feeling within you, we'll stop. Have some self-awareness, pause and say, is this about me? Is this about someone else? It's your sole responsibility, your human responsibility to make sure you're taking care of you in all the ways, in the emotional, in the physical, in the spiritual, in the non-physical, in connecting with your spirit and everything. It's why I use Magic Mind. You've heard me talk about it before. I brought, for those of you that are watching on video, I brought an example of the little bottle because I took it at my desk this morning and I was like, oh, I'm going to save that because I'm going to uh, be talking about it in the podcast today because I just I love it so much. And it helps me to elevate my mental clarity and putting together all of the content. But it also helps me calm my empathic reaction to things that are going on in the world. It helps me to focus and to not raise my cortisol level so high that I'm ineffective in helping people. The more productivity, it allows me to show up and do topics like this that are not all airy-fairy. And it's got the ingredients in it that help my body to feel rejuvenated, recently diagnosed with Hashimoto's, although I assumed that was on board. So I've made a real commitment to my health in this 2024 year to turn down that reactive system and that happens in autoimmune issues. I know the magic mind is helping me because of the calming effects of the nootropics and the supportive of the B vitamins, which are so important, especially my vegetarians and vegans out there. But I think all of us, because of the diminished amount of nutrition in some of our foods. So I recommended it to a friend who spent the weekend and she got right on and ordered. 
And for February, there is a code you can use. It's VickiB20. And that'll get you uh, 20% off at any time. Like if you already subscribe to this because you've heard me talk about it so much, you can go in and put my code in and it'll affect your next purchase. That's cool. Not a lot of companies do that. And the website, magicmind.com forward slash VickiB20 will also get you 56% off in the next 10 days. You do, come on, we know about these things. You got to show up, be productive. That's why you take your magic mind, right? It helps you to step on some of these and get fo move forward with some of these offers. So magicmind.com forward slash VickiB20 uh, will allow you to get 56% uh, off and then you get the VickiB20 that gives you the 20%. So head on over there, do this for yourself, because if you're in a heightened sense, it's really hard to look at your trauma and your difficulties and what being in that heightened sense will elevate your reactivity. And I would love for you a calm, beautiful, well-maintained body approach and Magic Mind helps with that. And you know what? They're also a company that if it doesn't work for you, you can tell them that. And although I don't know how that would happen. And within four hours, they refund you. Four hours. That's why I take it. Because you also get the energy of all that and the product in this cute little portable container. Which, by the way, the friend who was over, she is beautifully gifted uh, artist. And she's like, oh, that's a perfect size for putting beads in. <laughs> so you can recycle it too. And they're in all markets, all markets. Go to their website and uh, check out where you can get them in some stores. But if you order online, you get these discounts. So check it out. So with the help of things like this, of nature, of therapy, of staying hydrated, of embracing the power that comes from understanding you and we all are responsible for our own growth and that it's actually exciting. That's why I get lit up when something comes up for me. And every week I have awarenesses about myself and it makes me giggle a little bit because I'm like, am I ever going to run out of these? Like, <laughs> I know that once we elevate our soul and our own physical vibration that eventually we don't have to come back for lifetimes we eventually we are complete and I figure every time something comes up for me and it points me in the direction of oh you're still holding on to that what can we do about that or new awarenesses the journaling I do every morning brings that up for me and the more I get excited about knowing about myself it doesn't become like this something's wrong with me thing, it becomes, oh, I'm living my life. There's a joyful approach to every day. And if something comes up, I can grab on hold of it and I can clear it up either through conscious circuitry, through, got to flip the page, <laughs> through talking with my own coach or in the groups that I'm in of supportive women and helping me to understand who I am, but not limit who I am. You may find it you may find the idea of it overwhelming and that's where little tiny pieces come in some of my clients it makes my heart just swell they're like aren't you tired of me yet and it's like no as long as someone is saying Vicky I don't understand what's going on or I'm willing to understand what's going on I just can't quite find the light I can't light my own light or I don't understand why I'm still hanging on to some of this stuff. That's my role, right? That's my love to be there for people. And my point around this is if you move too quickly through some of this exploration of what may still be in your brain, in your heart, and in your etheric fields, it could cause like a downward spiral. So my expression or those micro movements matter applies to everything and it applies to this too because 
individuals experience a combination, we all do, of traumas. And it impacts our happiness. And it's very, this is going to be redundant, individualized. It's very unique, just like your wiring in previous episodes where I'm like, you have unique wiring. And the rest of the world would really love to know what that is. So let's go. Our experiences are different too. Like I grew up with seven siblings. Most of them had moved out of the house by the time I was probably 10. But the ones that were there, we had very different perceptions about what went on. And that's individualized trauma. Like, how did you experience it? What was your relationship with the adults in the home? Because it's very different. And I don't need to convince any of my siblings about what my experience was because that was my experience. I can have compassion and understand what their experience was because that was their experience. There's no need for competition here. Not all of them get that, but there's no need for competition. And there's also no need for demonizing or bastardizing our parents. There's absolutely no need. There is validity in stating truth of what you understood it to be, having more of an awareness as you get older, what might have been going on, but also not excusing it. So if someone is sharing with you their experiences and you just can't see it, you don't get it, it should, shush, shush. Maybe you're not their person then that should be having that conversation with. They should be having that conversation with. But we can all have compassion and empathy. And maybe you can say that sounds heavy. Have you thought of talking to someone who can help you with that? Because if we take, obviously, <laughs> I agree with a holistic approach along with the, which a whole person, simply meaning a whole person. So therapy, massage, exercise, definitely exercise if you're working through any kind of understanding of trauma. Get your body moving. The Body Keeps the Score by Bessel van der Kolk. It's an amazing book. But our bodies remember trauma better than we do. And in our physical brain, because we tend to block that out. And sometimes when I'm working with someone, and I'll be like, whoo, that oblique is like screaming at me. What's going on there? And they're like, yeah, I have had a problem there. And then we talk about it and we unwind what might have been going on. All of a sudden, something releases. So that's what I mean by a holistic approach. Make sure you're eating good foods and you are walking and you are just exercising not only your body, but your brain and your spiritual muscle by focusing on the texture of your fingertips or your feet touching the ground or the breath that you take for a minute. Doesn't have to be a lot. And it'll help the brain move it out and it will help you to be open to other modalities that may come along, whether it's cognitive behavioral techniques, whether it's EMDR consciousness, whether it's maybe analytics, maybe a dream therapist or someone who can help you support you in your healing process. It's important. It's very important. I have had times where someone's come to me and they've made their experience the focus of their whole life. Like they went through this thing in a, a short period of time. And yes, I'm not diminishing the impact it had on them, but they had made it their whole experience. And they came to me meeting after meeting, looking for this magic wand. And looking for me to say, oh, well, that's because of this or that's because of that or and always about external forces. And I had one particular client who I said, I'm sorry, I am not the person to help you in this. You need a clinical therapist, perhaps a psychiatrist, 
it would not be okay for me to take your money and to continue in this relationship because I also knew at some point Vicky as the person was going to say, cut it out, cut it out. I have run out of empathy in this situation. I want to put myself in that position. So yes, it's possible to hyper-focus on something and make it your whole story. I trust that those who actually want to move past trauma or through it and want to have happy experiences and joy and be present and understand that, yeah, there's going to be difficulties. There's going to be grief. Life comes with grief. And there's going to be absolute frustration in the human process with others and with ourselves. But that doesn't mean that you have to be in that all day, every day. And some of it's going to be extremely layered and need finesse and time and a hug and understanding from yourself that while, yes, you signed up for this lifetime, you did not sign up for any abuse, but you did sign up to learn how to navigate difficulties and challenges because not one of us was promised an easy ride. And it was in the fine print. Most of us didn't read that contract. We were so excited to get here. But there's also such a level of empowerment and self-love that comes from being able and willing to say, okay, that's my process. That's what I do. And I don't want to do that any longer. And what are the tools to get me there? So I hope this helped you understand, maybe give yourself permission to reach out and get help. Um, if I can be of service, vickybaird.com. Make sure that you go ahead and subscribe, hit that little dingy dingy thing so it lets you know that there's a new episode every Wednesday. And coming up, we're going to be uh, having some live uh, once a month. I have bundles that are available on my website and their worksheets, and I have tested them with clients and I, myself. I won't say that they're always joyful to go through because some of them are on this topic. So the one coming up for this month is about anxiety, and not that we're going to completely get rid of that because it is part of our lives, but if you purchase the bundle for $17, I will be there for one hour live a month to answer questions or to suggest how you might build on what the worksheets are or any tools that you've created. I want to be physically available for those that are doing this process in their life of expansion and growth. And we're going to laugh. There'll be some fun too. So I hope to see you there. I genuinely do. So take care of you. See you in the next episode. Thank you for listening to this episode of Intuition, Your Success Compass. I appreciate you being here. If you would like more information about developing your intuitive skills, removing those blocks, and creating the life that feels the most successful to you, then head on over to VickiBaird.com. That's V-I-C-K-I-B-A-I-R-D.com. And check out the courses the groups and the spaces app that will allow you to be part of our community and know about upcoming events and specials. Thank you so much. And I'll see you in the next episode.